conservative, I have to also make sure that these companies are able to catch the eye of the investor or the buyer so that they are sold at a reasonable price. It was heartening for the markets to hear, you know, your reiteration that it's going to be minimum government, maximum Absolutely. governments and that the governments will get out of a few sectors. Uh, do you remain completely committed to that? 100% and that is why I said instead of picking up on one after the other set of companies saying, oh, this is ready for sale, that is ready for sale, state it as a policy that you will have only certain core sectors, even there you will have only bare minimum. Earlier somebody did ask me, but didn't you say during Atmanirbar four at least? I am still saying not four, it can even be lesser, bare minimum is what I am talking about. And that is where when people question me, but public sector banks, yes, they are doing brilliantly for the very many causes for which government wants banks to function. They are also sitting over several CASA, the current account and savings account money, for which there is no demand in the areas in which the CASAs are coming in big numbers. Yes. There should be some synergy. And that is why we went about amalgamating banks. We want very many more SBIs. But that doesn't mean that the sentiment that, oh my God, there is a public sector bank and therefore I can't even touch it can be the guiding principle. We want more public sector banks which are functionally strong, professionally managed, which can meet the demands of a growing aspirational India. We want such banks. And I don't think one or two just banks like that will be able to meet this uh, growing demand for credit and growing demand for a varied reasons from the economy. But in the process, if I'm going to be sitting around with such pu public sector banks, which are just not in a mood or even in a position to stand up. Is it right to pour taxpayers' money to such banks? Absolutely. Where there may be buyers who can buy it and run it efficiently. We want more efficient banks in the economy. I can't be sitting with a laggard and thinking that I'm doing a favor to the economy. I want these banks to go out and be able to stand up there with private money coming in and be able to service our economy. That's why. It's the one announcement that's really uh, sent all banking stocks on fire, including the public sector banks. Now, is this the way forward for public sector banks uh, or is it uh, that there will be some pub public sector banks and some will be privatized? You know, so you said two banks, you would like to know which banks they are. We've not just named it. If I could name it even in the budget speech, And how I would soon would that happen? I hope to do it all this year. The formulations have all, we've started engaging with the Reserve Bank in a big way. Now, the, the disinvestment target of 1.75 lakh crore, does that, does that include uh, everything or is, you know, or LIC and others would be outside the purview of this? Well, as LIC is an IPO, we'll have to see how it, uh, we only list, I've read out the names of those disinvestment for which cabinet approval okay. has been taken. And is that the figure of 1.75 lakh crore corresponding to? Yes, in a way, yes. So everything right. else would be outside the purview of that? I wouldn't uh, so put it in black and white. Okay. Broadly, yes. But broadly, the ones announced today is where you uh, hope to get maximum. Largely. Money. Largely. largely. You know, uh, the much-awaited uh, development financial institution you announced today, uh, again, could you give us some specifics other than, you know, you know uh, providing a capital of 20,000 crore? Uh, any specifics, you know, have you thought of the name? Or when would it kick Not off? Not yet. And Not yet. In the sense, there are institutions already in, in the government of India uh, realm which we would want to use for this purpose, but not just for what they are now. We want it to be professionally run. We are giving them some money, but with which we are expecting to have 5 lakh crores within the next few years to be able to leverage uh, their own funds and be able to get that kind of money. But I also underline the fact that I don't think, again, I repeat this, for a growing aspirational India, one development finance institution can meet up with all the de growing demands and therefore in the act that we will have to bring in when, uh, the amendments that I have to make to existing laws also will have to have a provision for even private DFIs to come in. That's interesting. With that I want private DFI, government funded DFI all to compete. There is so much demand for development financing. I don't think it will be just one government institution to be able to match up with the demand. I am going to create space through law 
for even private institutions to come and do their own. Indian economy needs it all. Yes. That's a big story. Uh, we'll move on to the asset reconstruction and management company that you have uh, announced today. It's a path-breaking development. Can you tell us a little more about this bad bank and uh, will private sector also play a role here? Yes, we've uh, done it in sort of stages in the sense first with the uh, RBI being with us because this has been going on as a discussion with them. What we want to do is to have a kind of a holding company which will with a formulation given, take those assets, bad assets from the bank, from various banks and put it into that holding company. It will have some participation from the government, but largely it will be the IBA itself doing it. Oh, yes. So that holding uh, company would then uh, sp spruce up the accounts, understand where the uh, asset valuation is, and because year after year after year we are giving provisioning, these banks have already lost a certain net worth of these assets which are with them. They have already taken probably in paper a haircut, but they have not realized anything out of sitting over those assets for years, but providing for it in their bank books. Now once these assets are culled out and given to this holding company, they shall be able to do some kind of a, you know, uh, clearly uh, making sit up sure. and then call for private sector asset reconstruction companies, AIFs all to come and look at what they want to do with an asset which is like that with them and sell off the asset. And even at that whatever is realized the banks will have to get some part of what they have to get in the sense with the due haircut taken they will also get something from that realized uh, monies. So the bank essentially therefore gets back what it should get back and ideally because they are not in a position to or they do not have the wherewithal to deal with such assets because they are running the bank on an everyday basis. Yes. They do not have with them such experts who can understand what is what it is to deal with asset reconstruction and the, these assets are sitting there languishing not getting sold off. Sure. Now with this holding company and with also the market coming in, those assets are going to find some kind of a buyer and the banks therefore forever can get out of that situation and realize whatever little they can. So this is a workable solution that we are bringing in. The banks are all on board. We have had extensive consultation with them and with the Reserve Bank of India. 